everyone, it's Kat. I thought we'd do a close-up video today of my comic book collection. I don't really have that many. I only started properly collecting a little while ago, but I've always especially been interested in DC Comics, and in particular Batman. I've pretty much always loved Batman, but I don't know all the intricacies of his backstory or any other comic book characters for that matter. What I do know is that I really enjoyed reading these comics that I have to show you today. I hope the lighting's okay and there's plenty of cars driving past so I'll try and limit that. got a kind of makeshift filter on the microphone and I found it kind of make really nice sounds it was kind of a feather light touch Really good sound, but if you like it, I can try and include that again in the future. But for now, let's bust this open and have a bit of a look. I have two second volumes of things, but I will just show the covers or maybe some artwork inside. I'll try not to give away any spoilers. This is the first Batgirl comic of the New 52 reboot. She's out of the wheelchair, so she's no longer the Oracle, and instead has her legs back. They, um, came up with some kind of exotic experimental surgery to explain away the, the wheelchair. I think that's fine. It, um, doesn't need to be too complicated really, it just needs to be not glossed over. And it's good to see her up and around again, even though the Oracle was a very good character. She's still Barbara Gordon in essence, intelligent and driven, and altogether badass. I think in this comic, she struggles a lot with what it means to be out of the chair. I think even emotionally and psychologically, she was better. She was more stable as the Oracle, and now that the threat of her legs being taken away from her at any moment is kind of affecting her mid-battle. And what happened to her was especially brutal. If you read or know of the killing joke, it, um, they've made an animated movie of it, which I'm really excited about. I believe it's coming out in September. And they managed to get Mark Hamill you probably know more from Star Wars. Um, he voiced the Joker in the latest three Batman games. And I heard I got some kind of scenes from the killing joke there that he wasn't interested in portraying the Joker again. But when they told him they wanted him back for the killing joke, he changed his mind. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. And it's a very intense role that really requires someone who can play the Joker as well as he can. I think his voice is one of the best at that. A lot of times in the animated movies, I feel like the Joker voice actor kind of misses the mark. They still do a good job, but if 
feel like he brings a certain kind of particular crazy to the role that really sits well, kind of encapsulates the character. You can see she's kind of having flashbacks. I think primarily I'll just show you these, which I believe most of them is the cover art for the singular issues. This is, I think, six or so issues put in one. And the cover images are especially amazing. There's one later on that I love a lot. Looking at it just makes me feel really happy, <laughs> weirdly. I like this villain, too. His I wasn't super happy with his motive. It didn't seem strong enough. But I really like, I guess, what he represents. And his outfit is really cool. I thought that was a really well crafted villain. I'll try not to dwell too much on the story. Girl and Nightwing, which is a relationship I support a lot. I love Grayson. He's um the original Robin and then he becomes Nightwing later. I love all the Robins, but I particularly love Grayson. He has a bit of a cameo in this. The train. I think there's some fun graffiti on this. For a good time, call the Red Hood. It's a fun little Easter egg, I guess. I think the Red Hood is a really interesting character as well and kind of highlights a lot of issues with Batman and the DC Universe and raises questions of morality, kind of brings a darker tone to a few of the stories, and kind of a tragic tone. familiar with Tim Drake or the other iterations of Robin. I think, I don't know if he's the current Robin, but I think Damien Wayne is the one I can remember being the most recent, but I haven't really read much with him in it. This is one of my favourite blocks. I guess you can kind of see how amazing this guy's suit is. It's made up of different mirrors. And it's got kind of a reflection of Barbara herself. One side is Batgirl and the other side is Barbara. It's just really well drawn. A lot of a lot of this is very complex art style. It's not Basic. You can tell that someone's put a lot of time on this. Getting closer to the end, so I might just show you the cover art. Okay, a bit worse for wear. I like how. A lot of DC comics are kind of gritty. It's dark without delving into horrific territory. I mean, it does go there, but not every page is just disgusting violence, but it's kind of violence in a good way, I guess. Meaningful violence. Not always, but I particularly love this one. Batman and Batgirl. So 
flying through the air. I don't know, when I first saw this, there was just... It just made me smile. I believe purple is not the original colour of Barbara's suit, Barbara's cape. I think the original was yellow or grey, I'm not a hundred percent. devilishly hard to draw. You can always tell when you've done them wrong. And um, I can't draw shoes either to save my life. But I'm getting better at hands. It's also really hard when you finally get the grasp of how to make hands look normal. How to put in all the little creases without immediately adding like 40 years to your character's hands. Sketches. Not all of these are obviously relevant to this particular volume, but we're all the back. These are original sketches before they were coloured, I believe. Maybe to the back. Batgirl's back. Three years ago, Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, nearly lost her life when the Joker shot her through the spine. Ever the fighter, Barbara not only survives, but after years of sitting in a wheelchair, found a way to walk again. Barbara has reclaimed her life and regained her independence, but must prove to her mentors, Batman and Nightwing, as well as to her police commissioner father, that she's capable of doing it on her own. Even more important, she must prove to herself that she can complete, complete, the long journey to recovery. But getting back on her feet in Gotham City has become even more challenging when a very personal hit list is revealed in the hands of a new villain, and Barbara's name is on it. I also have... the second volume. From the New 52, the backer volumes highlight this, um, it comes to, I think, in the next one. Um, I think it's Death of the Family or Death in the Family. The Batman series and I think the Nightwing series also weave together that storyline. I haven't got the Batman one yet. I really want to. I think the first one's Court of Owls or Night of Owls or something like that. But they all have this story arc that you kind of need to read them all to get the full picture, I think. But Batgirl is very involved in that. So I haven't finished this one, I'm like halfway through. I won't show you the story, but I might pinpoint some art, and I might see if there's some artwork in the back. You can see Batwoman here as well. Let's see. I don't want to read the back of that one. It's got some other series in the back. Red Hood and the Outlaws, and Batwing, and... So yeah, the court of vows. That was the one I was talking about. 
before you came to get that one. So use pencil art. I really like how this is included in the back of some of them. Nightfall is coming. just in plastic because I feel like there's no need to throw the plastic away if it comes in it but whilst I kind of like to keep them in good condition I'm not really precious with them I suppose so I believe this is a retelling of Bruce's first year as Batman and I think this is what Gotham is loosely based on or inspired by and it had some very prominent Batman authors there. I haven't finished this one mostly because as soon as I finish it, I'm going to want to buy more comics. And I can't really justify doing that right now. So I've been avoiding doing that. But the writing in this is particularly superb. It's like novel worthy. I'll read you the back of this one as well. I don't think my camera is making out the writing very well. I probably need to upgrade my camera at some point. In 1986, Frank Miller and David Mazzaculli, Mazzaccelli, I'm sorry, I've totally mispronounced that guy's name. I apologize profusely. Produced this groundbreaking reinterpretation of the origin of Batman and who he is, and how he came to be. Written shortly after The Dark Knight Returns, Miller's dystopian tale of Batman's final days, you one sets the stage for a new vision of a legendary character. So it's just got some extras that this comes with. I think there's some sketches in the back that we can look at together. more matte and less shiny than the other ones. It kind of smells like Play-Doh, which is the weirdest thing ever. Um, new comic books do have this lovely comic book smell that one kind of smells more play to we Oh, the paper is really nice. We all know what this is. I am. Um, like a lot of people, I wasn't super taken with Batman vs. Superman. I saw it, even though Ben Affleck is not my cup of tea. I thought. He did okay. In my head, he's not really Batman, but I feel like he really researched the role. He really gave it his all, but he still didn't really do it for me. I think the editing was the primary issue with that movie more than anything else. He will become the greatest crime fighter this world has ever known. It won't be easy. Chapter 1 Who I am. How I came to be. It's, so it's all paper. It's not the shiny material, which means there's less glare, which is awesome. But 
the writing is it's, it's really the writing and it's is really lovely. It's very immersive and has a very strong voice for all the characters. And it's kind of got because I believe this comic is rather old. It's got the older style. It doesn't quite inspire nostalgia for me, but it does kind of it's transporting. The colours are really older, kind of classic, really suits the story and the time period that they're trying to take us to. I might read the first page. January 4th. Gotham City. Maybe it's all I deserve now. Maybe it's just my time in hell. Twelve hours. My stomach's been trying to eat itself for the last five. Barbara's flying in. I don't care how much it costs. Trains no way to come to Gotham. In an airplane from above. All you'd see are the streets and the buildings. Before you went to thinking it's civilized. You can see really early on, not necessarily my delivery is going to do it justice, pun intended, um, but it's written really well, it's not just telling a story, it's got a very good grasp of the characters and kind of tells their inner monologues in a really interesting way. And every couple of pages is kind of based on time periods. It takes you right throughout the year. The art style is really great in this. Right, flip to the back and see if we can see. And that isn't going to. some old cover art. Oops. Very old Batman style there. Some old still. Lots of cats. So the next one is a very familiar, very loved face. I like pretty much everyone else. Adore Harley Quinn. I think she's a really fun character. She tells the story in a really enjoyable way. But at the same time, she's got this intelligence and passion and psychoticism. Necessarily, but she kind of has so much empathy for some people and some animals and people who've been wronged, and especially 
actual dolls that have been rocked but for a lot of other people she could kill them in an instant forget about it and move on the new 52 Harley comics are very light hearted and I actually found myself laughing out loud in volume 2 which I'll show you in a minute they have this really great team up in volume 2 that really amused me. The artwork in this is also really good. There's some fun stories. Um, the beginning is <laughs> a different artist. Harley has a dream and in the dream different artists are vying to make a comic about her. Vicky Suki. And um, so it goes through all the different artists who have drawn Harley in the past. And it shows her in different styles. Which is a lot of fun, I think. This is Harley independent from the Joker and she's while she's still very much hung up on him, she realises the domestically violent <laughs> is the Joker. Um, a situation that she was in and kind of, whilst she properly taken back, I think she has this newfound respect for herself and in New 52, she's I don't know if it's exactly monogamous, but she's definitely in a confirmed relationship with Poison Ivy, which I think is especially adorable. This is the original Bruce Tim iteration of Harley. I do like her jester outfit. It's cute and kind of not necessarily the Bruce Tim version, but can be sexy without being overt, I suppose, but I don't think there's really anything wrong with Harley's outfits because it kind of further represents the woman she is. She's not supposed to be a role model. What kind of a kid version? She's gone to see the Teen Titans things do not go well. Ivy. This is just fun. The whole comic is just fun. It deals with some serious stuff. Ish. Not really. It's really just fun. It's like a lovely palate cleanser to life. This is cute. They run Harley's crash the wedding of two of the writers. I think it's two of the writers who um, write a lot of the New 52 Harley. I know a lot of people didn't like the New 52 Harley and I really haven't read previous Harley comics but I do know about the character a little. I have watched a lot of stuff with her in them. I really like Harley and Scarecrow because of their bat bat <laughs> because of their background in psychiatry. I studied psychology, so it's a particular interest of mine. And I love how they retain um, their background and kind of work it into who they are as a villain. Scarecrow probably used to be my favourite Batman villain. I just find fear to be extremely interesting. What's your greatest fear? 
What's the one thing that can control you like nothing else? Turn someone strong so weak and overcoming fear I think is really important. Not ignoring it, but letting it become a part of yourself that you can deal with. I think it's easier to when your fears are a bit more manageable. I used to be terrified of zombies. Not so much anymore. I still don't like them. But I think but I would definitely say I'm way more afraid of crocodiles than I am afraid of zombies. And I think that's a step in the right direction see here that this man's mistreating his dog, his little sausage dog, and Harley does not appreciate this, so I believe she kills the man and rescues his dog. And that speaks a lot for Harley's kind of twisted, but kind of well-meaning morality. She's on her bike here with the contents of her life. And she's going up the highway with her dog friend and she has this toy beaver that kind of talks to her throughout the volumes. Harley's a little bit self-aware in these comics, kind of breaks a fourth wall every now and then. No. It's never in a bad way, in my experience. It just kind of, like, it suits her character. Like, it doesn't seem out of character for her to kind of have all this knowledge about herself or to bust down that fourth wall. Because even with her, it does, like, it's not a serious comic anyway. And. It also wouldn't be that unbelievable for Carly to Carly, for Harley to think that she was not really real. Seeing it's a half charred beaver friend. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. There is Harleen. The art style's really fun. And she becomes roller derby, a roller derby chick in this as well, which I think suits her rather well. Find some more just stills. Holly. It's like a Valentine's Day special in this as well. Here we go. It's got a chainsaw going through the heart, and below her angelic figure is just the bodies of countless men stabbed with various garden tools and home repair supplies. This, I don't want to ruin it, it was rather amusing, quite a few good jokes and the setup was just great. And she has this team up with this geriatric ex kind of spy. He's like a cyborg, and the weight of his own enhancements has kept him in the mobility scooter. I believe he's also Jewish, so he has all these colloquialisms. Here, yeah, Harley's having a rather interesting dream. <laughs> 
Here she is. shows up a little bit later. As you can see here, I get into a bit of trouble. And um, the dog she picked up in the first issue, whatever they're called, um, is still here. It's still happy and alive and her pajamas are her old just her outfit. Ivy's always got very revealing outfits. She's like one with nature. But it's usually like she's not really wearing clothes at all. And they just colour her to make up for that. Here she is. Nocturnal edition. On the beach. This entire thing pretty much takes place on Coney Island. Harley and Ivy are taking advantage of men. I think they're a really cute couple. I don't really know a lot about their relationship. I've heard mixed things. I had someone tell me that it was kind of as abusive as her Joker relationship, but I don't see any evidence of that in here. Yeah. Holly is the cutest serial killer of all time. But here we go. These are some really nice old cover arts for Holly. It's supposed to, but I know this is one of those like white rooms, um, straight jacket, but it kind of also looks a little bit like a web to me. I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but it's a nice picture all the same. Harley jamming out, jamming, Harley jamming out on her mallet. This one's obviously relevant to the new 52. It's got the outfit and her little friend. Hyena. With a menagerie of pet friends. These covers are really nice. I kind of want to scan them and hang them up. And a robot chicken. Holly. Green arrow. I don't really like his Robin Hood hat. He has in so many things, it just makes him look silly. The Flash. Batman. Green Lantern. And I think it's Martian Manhunter. Over here in the corner. And Harley's gonna have some fun playing whack a mole. Whack a bat. A mad kind of style. It's got some villains down here at the bottom too. Gorilla, Ivy, Penguin. So interesting, interesting car cover variant. Joker appears to have a bit of stubble in the hip. He's got Harley on puppet strings, which think is a pretty accurate representation of their relationship. This is cute. Holly in various silly poses. Kind of a slightly steampunk Holly. I've seen this picture a lot before. I think it's a quite a popular concept. Gotham or bust. So 
some pencil lines. So this is the same still from the beginning with the puppy. Some more stills. Some more color lines. And by color, I actually mean pencil. It's really nice to see how something begins. It doesn't look like much, but you see where it ends up. little character designs. So and the back says, The cyclone aged the only roller coaster in Coney Island, at least not after Harley Quinn rides into town. When Gotham's favourite sociopath inherits a building off the famous boardwalk, she feels right at home in the literal freak show. Unfortunately, the legion of bounty hunters after the price in her head seem to know it too. Who else but Harley Quinn can handle all that Brooklyn's criminal underbelly has to offer? Russian spies, senior citizens, and a rival roller derby team included, and still have time for a double chili dog or six. I love how so many villains in the DC universe especially centering around Batman, a kind of not 100% evil. I mean, so many people are like pure evil. But I guess one of the main points of Batman versus the Joker is that Batman thinks there's good in everyone that he can bring out or that, that, can, that it's good in everyone, essentially. And the Joker is all about corruption, which is exactly what he did to Harley. So I might just leave this one in the plastic, because even though it's not like super spoilery, I really don't want to accidentally ruin anything. But we're like. Probably a lot less with editing, but but as you can see, it's Harley in a bikini, and the joke has got her at gunpoint. They do kind of a Harley origin story in this as well. Has Harley as a child as well, which is really interesting. But it's kind of an origin story told by Harley herself. It seems pretty accurate, though. Even if it doesn't come from necessarily the most reliable source. So volume 2 is called Power Outage. My favourite thing about this volume was the Power Girl and Holly team up. I don't want to spoil too much about that, but it just was so funny me. It was just so enjoyable. And, um, it was, her, her, the ridiculousness of her outfit was also commented upon, <laughs> um, in a funny way. But, yeah. I really enjoy the backup comics and the other comics that I have, but these ones are just so much fun. And you can kind of lose yourself in them. And then the only ones that I had to finish, um, open, like, <laughs> from, like, I read it cover to cover, pretty much. And I believe at the end of this one she goes to Comic-Con. As Harley. I think it's, I think people are cosplaying as Harley Quinn as a person. Like, she exists, ex as she exists in the DC universe, rather than her existing as a comic book character, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. It doesn't really play by typ typical comic book rules. 
this is Holly's um, outfit to accompany Power Girl's outfit. She's got this cape. I really love her hair in this too. So I've got one more big comic and three little issues. So it was free comic book day last weekend and my friend picked this up for me. Um, I've been avoiding comic book shops because I know I'll buy something because I hate unfinished stories and there's just so many in a particular story arc that I them all, and I really want more Batman comics, because mm -hmm. I love Batman so much. It's borderline an issue. This is a Captain America comic, and I believe inside there's also a Spider-Man Also, the only Marvel comic that I have. I have no problem with Marvel characters. I think there's some really great heroes in that, especially in the X Men series. But I think I still prefer DC. I definitely prefer the DC villains. But I think that's a very common opinion. Black Panther advertisement. He's a really interesting character too, but I primarily only know him from a Marvel cartoon series that I watched for a little while. I think that was very much aimed at children. It wasn't too immature, but it was just in the, in a sense that I couldn't quite get into it. I also have Superman Red Sun. This is a really interesting kind of what if story, and it's um, you can recognize the communist Russian kind of symbol here, maybe. And it's what if Clark had landed in Soviet Russia instead during the height of the Civil War, or I think. At least his adulthood takes place during the Civil War. This one isn't mine, but I was loaned it from a very eager friend. And I'm very keen to read it, because who doesn't love a good what-if story? Try not to what-if too much in your real life. strange visitor from another world who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, as the champion of the common worker, fights a never-ending battle for Stalin, socialism, and the international expansion of the Warsaw Pact. In the startling twist on a familiar tale, a certain Kryptonian rocket ship crash lands on Earth, carrying an infant who will one day become the most powerful being on the planet. But his ship doesn't land in America. He is not raised in Smallville, Kansas. Instead, he makes his new home on a collective in the Soviet Union. I thought this was a really clever idea, especially as 
Clark Kent is kind of like America on steroids. So we'll have a quick look. It's kind of been made to look like a Technicolor. As I said, it's kind of reminiscent of Technicolor. I haven't quite made it through this yet. I just need some time. But it's such an interesting retelling. I, I think this is supposed to be Stalin. I'm not sure. Such a clever idea. I think there's some designs in the back of potential Superman outfits. There we go. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> these are pretty great. So these were in, um, potential outfits. It looks like, I'm not sure if they went with this anyway, that when he was in non-Superman mode, that he would wear a moustache or a beard. We've got Wonder Woman over here as well. Hero of the Working Man. This is pretty great. I don't know if he's included, but here's some character proposals for Green Lantern. And some more for uh, Russian clock Kent. Wonder Woman. Batman cough. <laughs> and it's got, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be chill. It's um, it's got Batman. A little fluffy Russian hat has the bat symbol. is right. It makes sense that he'd want to be warm. And this this is pretty much the best. And the great thing about this is it kind of tells the tale just in this one book. So you're not dragged along for yonks and yonks. Batman cape with fur lining. pretty much the best thing ever. I am seriously losing my voice here. So I might just put this to the side. And just really quickly show you the last two I have. Now, I was given these kind of pretty much for free, so I thought I'd As I said, I really love the Nightwing Oracle Grayson and Gordon pairing. And I believe this is kind of setting things up for the next storyline. There's a lot of convergence. One thing goes to Superman and Wonder Woman one as well. And it's kind of the converging of two well loved characters. I love how her dress is made up of, like, circuits. It's pretty cool. It's a fairly basic kind of story, but it's still good. And uh, Dick and Barbara used to date for quite a long time. They have a very extensive back history that I don't think my voice can stand going into right now. 
But suffice it to say that she broke up with him during the time that she was the Oracle. I think because she felt like she was holding him back. This is him a couple of years later. And Nightwing used to do really lovely things for Barbara when she was Oracle. It was one thing he took her skydiving so she could feel what it was like, the adrenaline of falling again. I know that was really lovely. suggestions for ones I should read. I will when I get around to it. Maybe when I have more money to put aside for these kinds of things. I, um, I made sure I read it online because a character that I really like is Deathstroke. For no particular reason, I have a serious ridiculous infatuation for Deathstroke, and I think it arose from the original Teen Titans animated series, where he was slayed, because I think they weren't allowed to say Deathstroke, because they thought it was too harsh for a kid's show. But online, because it's kind of terrible, <laughs> despite my love for the character, and I think he's blonde in that, which weirds me out, I don't like it. Okay, so, that's that, and I hope 